we're going to create a tote bag folded and sewn like it would be in real life. So that means it'll all be one piece. Using your rectangle tool, make a rectangle that is the width of your tote bag, and the height is going to be twice the height of the tote bag plus the full depth. So my tote bag is 11 inches tall times two is 22 inches, and my depth is five inches, so that's 27 inches total. Now with edit pattern, we're going to select the top and bottom of the pattern and right click on one side and choose distribute internal line between segment. Then say okay. This is gonna put a line in the middle of your pattern. Then you'll right click on that line and choose offset as internal line and you're going to enter half the depth of the bag. So in my case, that's 2.5 inches and then check this box for both sides. When sewing a tote bag in real life, the bag gets folded in half with the faces together and the depth of the bag gets inserted up inside of it, sewn within the side seam. Then when you flip it out, you get that little triangle on the side and the depth kind of splays out and lies a bit more flat. But it's really hard to mimic flipping something right side out in 3D. So what we're gonna do is sew it partially together on the side and apply our fold angles to create that triangle before or sewing it shut. Beginning where we left off with your fold arrangement tool, you're gonna fold the bag in half at the middle. Then you're gonna select the outer two internal lines and right click on one to extend them to the pattern outline and add a point. That's gonna divide this side seam into three sections. And actually I'm going to do the exact same thing with the middle line as well. So you could do these all three together because we need this line segmented out for sewing. Now we want to right click and split this line at the same distance as this side bit here, so half of the depth of your bag. So you can see I have these two segments that are both 2.5 inches. And now I'm going to do this on all four corners. Then I'll select these four segment points and right click to divide internal point. This makes these separate lines so that we can apply fold angles to just these short lines. Now with internal polygon, I'm going to draw four lines from the middle of the bag at the side seam, connecting these four points. Using segment sewing, you're going to sew the side seams together outside of all the internal lines, making sure that the ticking marks are both closest to the internal lines. You can check in 3D to make sure your sewing isn't twisted. Before we simulate the bag, we're going to right click in the 3D background and choose simulation properties. In the property editor, we're going to turn off gravity by setting it to zero. Then when you simulate, the bag is going to float instead of falling on the floor. Now we'll apply our fold angles. So first you can actually right click on the center line and I like to choose convert to baseline so that I keep the marking, but we no longer need a fold here. These lines all need to fold towards the inside of the bag, so select them with edit pattern and change the fold angle to 360 and check fold rendering on to make the fold crisp. You can right click on the bag in 3D to strengthen it and that'll help the fold angles set in while you're simulating. The diagonal lines create your triangle and they need to fold to the outside, but they don't need to be as crisp as the internal angles, so I'll do them a little bit higher than zero at 25 and I won't check fold rendering on. Now that we have the shape of the bag that we need, we can sew it shut. With free sewing, you're gonna start at that blue fold line and sew to the center of the bag. Then start at the blue fold again and stop when you hit your blue dot. Then make sure you turn the sewing in the property editor. You'll do the same type of sewing from the center of the bag out to those fold angles again. Remember all of this sewing is turning back on itself so it all needs to be turned in the property editor. Now you could just leave it like this and sew the other side identically, but my original intention was to have the side seam sewing stop at that turned sewing. So with my edit sewing tool, I'm actually gonna drag it up to stop where my sewing was and then drag it down at the bottom to my blue dot so that it stops up here. Then I can do that same sewing like I was doing on the others on either side of this bottom fold line. And I would turn that one as well. Then you'll just apply the exact same sewing to the other side of the bag. Then you can simulate and unstrengthen the bag. With simulation turned off, I'm gonna use my gizmo to position the bag under the avatar's arm where it would hang on its shoulder. Then you can simulate and the skin offset of the avatar and collision thickness of the bag will kind of force them away from each other so that they're not colliding. 
Now I'm going to apply my fabric to my bag by dragging and dropping it onto the fabric chip in the object browser. So I'm using Cotton Heavy Canvas from the Clo Library, and then I just create a copy of that to use for my straps, but I change the texture image so that the straps look more like cotton webbing. Now with the rectangle tool, I'll left click down to create my strap, which is going to be one inch wide by 19 inches long. Then I'll assign it to my strap fabric. Now with edit pattern, I'm going to right click on the top of my bag and split it using uniform split into two sections. Then I'm going to right click and split again and enter in half of the distance of the space between my strap. So the reason I do it like this is that I know the space between my strap, but I don't know to the edge of the bag, so I'm just marking it out from center. In 2D, I'm going to place my strap right over where it's sewn to my bag. Then I'm going to copy paste this strap to create the second one. And I'm going to place that down at the bottom where it sews to the other side of my bag. Then I'm going to split that side of the bag just like I did the other one to mark for my straps. We'll use free sewing to sew our strap on because we only marked one side on the bag. So you'll use your blue dot as a guide of what to sew to. So you need to sew your strap first. And on the bottom, you want to kind of envision this curving around and sewing to the bag so that you go in the correct direction. And then we'll do the same with the other strap. Then select your strap patterns and right click in 3D and choose superimpose side. If you have a strap superimpose upside down like one of mine, you can just right click on it again and superimpose side a second time and it should fix it. I'm just going to use my gizmo to straighten these up so that they don't collide with each other. And then before you simulate, make sure you select your strap patterns and change the particle distance to 5. My patterns kind of flew together pretty fast, so if you want to freeze your tote bag, you can just simulate the straps and you might avoid some issues. If you hold the W key when you click on the strap, you can place a single pin. I place a pin on the top of each strap and use those to guide the straps up over the shoulder. And then just unfreeze your bag when you're ready and allow it to simulate up. You can also use strengthening to fix any collision within the strap itself. Before moving on, I select my tote bag and change the particle distance down to 10, just to be sure I don't have any collision issues around the area where it's all folded together. But use your best judgment on the power of your computer and whether or not you want to do this. To mark my facing, I'm going to select the top edge of my bag and right click and choose offset as internal line and enter in the height that I want my facing, which is going to be one inch. I'll do the same at the bottom of my bag. And then unfortunately, I need to split this line to add the points that mark out where my straps go. So to make it easy on myself, I'm going to measure the distance from the strap to the edge of the bag so that I don't have to also mark that center point. Then I'll right click on the internal line and split the line at 3.5 inches. I'll do the same on the other side of this line and then on the internal line at the bottom of my bag. Then with my trace tool, I'm going to hold shift and select all of the sides that make up this one inch facing strip. And then I right click and choose trace as pattern. You can either trace the other facing pattern or I'm going to simply copy paste mine with transform pattern and then rotate it around so that my segment points line up with my original pattern. You'll notice in a second that we're going to sew these in as identical copies as opposed to a mirror image. I always teach people to keep all fabrics face out in clo. Even for something like a facing, you want the back side of the fabric to be in towards the inside. It's not the same as real life, but it helps prevent collision issues. I'll show you what I mean. With free sewing, I'm gonna sew across the top of my facing and then the top of my tote bag. And in the property editor, I'm going to turn the sewing. Then I'll also sew the sides and turn the sewing. And when you sew the bottom, you'll notice that the sewing is already turned because you're sewing to an internal line. Then I'm gonna do the same with my other facing. Keep in mind the sides of the facing can either be sewn to the bag like this or they could be continuous sewn to each other like you would in real life. Either one is fine. As always with our small pattern pieces, we're gonna select our facing patterns and change the particle distance to five before we simulate them. I'm gonna right click in 3D and choose superimpose under to place them inside my bag where they should go. 
And again, if you turn on textured surface, you'll notice what I was talking about with them being face out, just like my bag. So this is different to what we would do in real life, but the best thing for avoiding collision issues. I decided my straps were too far apart, so I'm gonna show you now how I fixed that. In 3D, I clicked to get my blue dot to decide where I wanted to move my straps to. So I determined that distance, and then I selected all four sets of segment points on the left side of my bag and facings. And I click and drag to move those over while tapping my right click. And then I enter in the distance that I wanna change them. I do the same with all the points on the right side of the bag and facing, sliding those to the left by the same amount. When you do that, the strap sewing on the bag will just increase by that amount. So you need to select the end of that sewing and drag it in until it hits your blue dot to match the strap width. Then you can simulate and the straps will jump to their new position. In order to easily add our top stitching, we are gonna actually split our bag to put a point at the outside of our strap. So there's two ways to do this. One is to just use edit pattern and right click and choose split and put in the width of your strap. Another cool way is to use your sewing to add points after the fact. So with your edit sewing tool, you can right click on the strap sewing and choose add point at the start or end of a line, depending on where that little ticking mark is. So in my case, I'm gonna add it to the end because the ticking mark is the start of the line. So it's quite tedious, but I do recommend for the kind of top stitching that you'd have on a tote bag, we are gonna add these points to both the pattern edge and the internal line, as well as our facing pattern at the top and bottom. So that'll look like this when it's done. Now with internal polygon, we're gonna draw the lines for our top stitching. So at each of these little boxes, I'm gonna draw a continuous line from the bottom left-hand corner up and diagonally across, and then up again and diagonally across down to the starting point. I found when trying to copy paste these on each of the other boxes, they don't snap to the points. So it was actually faster for me to just draw each one individually. I'm going to hide my internal lines in 3D so you can see the effect of this. But now we're gonna sew these little X's down. Using free sewing, I'll sew along the X on my facing piece and then sew it to my bag. You'll notice once you get going in the correct direction, you can kind of do the whole thing without having to run exactly over each line. Just make sure you're starting at that same corner and going in the same direction for all of them, and that way they'll match up. So you can see the sewing gives us the indentation that we want to look like real life sewing, and then we're gonna add top stitching on top of that. So if you go over to the top stitch tab in your object browser and select default top stitch, you'll be able to edit it below in the property editor. So I'll start by applying this with the free top stitch tool to the top edges of my bag. I always start by applying at least one stitch before I do my editing so I can just see what it's going to look like. I'll select default top stitch and the first thing I look at is the offset, which is how far from the edge the top stitch will be. Then I'll set the stitch length or SPI. This is usually somewhere between 14 and eight. Once I'm happy with that, I'll set a space amount, which is the little space between each stitch. And adding a little bit of space helps make the stitch look more real, like it's going into the fabric. Then I'll set my thread text, which is the thread thickness, usually somewhere between 40 and one to 200 would be really thick thread. And then I'll set my color. This top stitch is gonna be applied to the top and bottom of the facing pieces, and also the internal line on the bag that the facing sews to. I notice I can't really see the top stitch at the bottom of the facing, so I grab my edit top stitch tool and do a bit of investigating. At the back, I can see the stitch, but I see that it's below the sew line. So with edit top stitch, I select that stitch, and in the property editor, I'm gonna flip it to the other side of the line. So I can see when it's flipped, it gets lost in the normal map of the sew line. So what I decided to do was increase the offset a bit to a 16th of an inch, and now you can kind of see it pop up over that line. 
You may also notice the top stitching not showing up on the facing. So remember that these patterns should be face out, meaning that you're seeing the back side of them here. With a top stitch at the very bottom, you can change the configuration to be both instead of front, and it'll show on both sides. But rather than have OBJ top stitches inside the garment back to back here, I'm instead going to create a copy of this top stitch and set some of them to the back side. So here with my edit top stitch tool, I'll just marquee over all the facing top stitches and assign them to this new copy. And then for just this new copy, I'll go to the bottom and change it from front to back. Now I'm going to create a copy of each of those top stitches and I'm going to call them face no offset and back no offset. I'm going to grab my free top stitch tool and select face no offset. In the property editor, I'm going to change the offset to zero. When you have a top stitch selected in the object browser, that's the one that will apply. So now I'm going to apply this to the four little X boxes on my bag. Just like when you sewed it, you just need to get going in one direction and then you can kind of jump to the the end and it will put a top stitch all over this stitch. We're going to do the exact same thing to the stitch called back no offset and then apply that to the little X boxes on the facing patterns. If you haven't already, remember to right click in the 3D background and under simulation properties put gravity back to negative 9800. I also found that I needed to select my straps and apply bonding to them, which is like fusible, just because the fabric I had was stretching too much. Then I put my bag in high res using the high res garment button, and at the end I applied my graphic. 